Source for Coffee Talk here on the Ono Coffee Channel. I'm Jay, your host, and we do coffee talk pretty much every weekday from uh, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. And so what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. I'm still in Salt Lake City in the town of South Jordan, probably about, I guess, about 10 miles south of the city proper. And uh, it's another pleasant day out there. It looks kind of nice, and uh, we're here at the hotel because I'm getting ready to uh, head back out. Spent yesterday shooting all day at Cafe de Bola with my friend John Piquet, really good time. And uh, you know, there's a lot to shoot. There's a, it, it's one of these things that just, there's a lot to cover and uh, it's interesting. Mom, how are you, man? Good to see you this morning. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna, yesterday we tried the hotel coffee, the gourmet blend that's actually a, a Rainforest Alliance certified coffee. I'm staying at the Hilton Home Two Suites here in South Jordan. Nice hotel. I've stayed at Home Two Suites before. I've stayed at the one in Schaumburg, Illinois, uh, over a year ago. And these are nice, kind of budget friendly hotels that have kitchenettes and they're pretty spacious. Like um, you know, there's a couch and stuff like that here. All right? That's a little bit messy. I didn't keep my place very clean. I like to just kind of enjoy myself. But there's a, a little uh, microwave. You can get, if you really want to get a, a cooktop, they'll bring you one. And one of the things that I, I don't know about this one, I'm pretty positive it does have this, but last year I spent New Year's at a home two suites, the one in Schomburg. And one of the things I was looking for when I was looking for a hotel, because I had to do a trip to make my status with the airline. And I called them up and I was like, do you guys have an outdoor grill? And they're like, yeah, we got an outdoor grill. So. I believe this one probably has the same thing, outdoor grills for, for guests to use. So last uh, last New Year's, I was like all by myself, went outside, went went to the Whole Foods that was not too far away from that hotel, bought a steak, went to, uh, and then cooked it on the grill. It's a really nice time. But today we're gonna look at, the, yesterday we looked at the coffee, which was the Rainforest Alliance. I got another one here. But today I thought, you know, let's see what they have going on inside the hotel room. So today they've got the Cuisinart. And this is a two-cup brewer. Two-cup is a Cuisinart. What model is it? WCM11. And these are pod brewers, right? Like, like the one we saw in Las Vegas. Little pods. Good morning, Kione. How are you? A lot to you. And uh, you put these two pods in here. It looks like they could have enough space for two pods instead of just one. And then <clears throat> there's a, a little door at the top. You open it up. They put the water in. Again, this is very similar. Like most brewers, the water goes in the reservoir. It goes down into a heated chamber in the below that boils the water. And the boiling water pushes up through this stem into the top and then it drops onto the basket and brews the coffee. Fairly simple and rather reliable way to brew coffee. Most brewers are, are made this way. Even the Tective Warm does this in, in, in basically the same way. Now where they really change and, and where the difference is between something like a Tective Warm and this is that the Tective Warm has, you know, more beefier boilers and they find they have a way to regulate the temperature more with more control. These are just kind of boiling and the companies just rely on the fact that it's boiling water to just do its thing. There's a power switch on the side and what else? Oh, there's a selector switch here. I don't know what that selector switch does. Let's see. Two cups or one cup. So I guess I can switch it to two cups. One cup. And what does that do? Does that do it? Oh, can we see it doing anything? No, that's just doing there. The orifices at the bottom of these are two different. So as you can see, this one's bigger, that one's smaller, maybe. I don't know why that is. That, that seems odd. But we're going to set it to this way, to the single cup. And then we have a couple of choices. We have a selection of choices for coffees today. We have our fresh coffee inside. This is some kind of generic coffee. I have no idea what that is. 
There is a coffee bean and tea leaf Brazil. All right. And then we've got two packs of the Rainforest blend. And I guess this is Pete's, I mean, this is a coffee bean and tea leaves, you know, Rainforest certified coffees that they blend together. And um, I don't know, what do you think? And what, what coffees do you think we should try? Rainforest blend, Brazil blend, or maybe we should do one of each. Like, well, we'll exclude that. Maybe do one of each. We've got a two cup brewer, right? Two cup brewers right here. We can do one of each. All right, let's try that. Let's let me just uh, do some adjustment here with our setup. Maybe give me a little more space, and let's tilt down a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. All right, let's sit down. Can the cable reach the wall socket, which is right behind the phone? I didn't do much testing of all this before we started, so. Oh yeah, it does reach. Excellent, excellent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that in here, but then we're gonna do a tasting, right? We're gonna do the Brazil, and then we'll switch it to two cups, and now we'll switch to two cups. And the power is on. I can hear it boiling a little bit. So we're gonna do Brazil. And we also have two cups here, right? So that's why we can go for this. Okay, this is the Brazil. We're gonna put the Brazil on the right, on this side, the right side for you. And then we'll do the Rainforest blend. There's some, now that the, the roaster, the, the brewer is on, there is some aromatics coming off, and it's very unpleasant. <coughs> Actually, it's horribly unpleasant. Like, imagine, like, old, old, stale coffee just sitting there, heating in your nose. Gosh. This is difficult to open. Okay, so, reinforce lip. Oh, my gosh. Wow, that is really horrific. Okay, so we'll put that in here. We got two Brazil rainforest, and Kiona says it would be interesting if there's a difference. I hope I hope there is. Gosh, it would be terrible if it wasn't. Because so put that there, two cups here, and um, I've got I've got the coffee from downstairs from from yesterday as our control, or just as a comparison because it's it's a gourmet rainforest certified. <coughs> oh my gosh, man. <coughs> I really, I very rarely get the gag reflex, but wow, that is just horrific. All right, so let's pour this in here. We're going to pour the whole, this is about 12 ounces, 16 ounces of water. I should probably pour eight, probably, I think these are probably better for eight ounce, four ounce pours, right? So maybe I'll just pour half of it and see how we do. All right, we're going to do that. All right, let's go. You heard that big spurt? A little bit more. Okay, that's. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, the light went out. I think it just blew the power. <laughs> because my phone is plugged into the wall and it's no longer charging. Oh no, it says it has power. All right, let's see, take that out. Let's put that back in. Does the, does the computer power up? Yeah, it does, okay. so. That's not the case. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. Because the power just, for some reason, power turned off. And now I turn the power back on. And now we hear running. Okay, good, good. Close that because, oh, man. 
Maybe it just didn't like the fact that I was very upset with it and it was smelling badly. Let's adjust this a little bit more. All right, so you can see it's starting to brew now. So remember, Brazil and the Rainforest Alliance, the Rainforest Blend, both from coffee bean and tea leaf. So again, why are we doing this? Because, you know, you know, I realize the fact that people come on trips and, you know, sometimes, and here's the thing. So like, I don't bring coffee with me, normally, right? Why? Because I'm just lazy and I just don't like to have the inconvenience of carrying more stuff than absolutely necessary. So I'd much rather go and seek out coffee when I'm traveling, visiting different coffee shops and whatnot. But I realize that people don't always have that option, you know, depending on what your, what your travel schedule is like or the reason you're traveling, you may not have the ability to go places. Especially if you're like me when I was in Chicago and I don't have a car and I have to like Uber everywhere and it's not terribly cheap and not terribly convenient. So sometimes if you really must have it, you must resort to what the hotel offers you. And this is what we have in the in-room service. Now I'm sure a lot of people will take these pods and they'll fill the entire cup up. But I think that means that we're getting under-extracted brews. We're just basically too much water to the coffee ratio. So we're trying to balance that coffee to water ratio. Too bad they don't really put the weights on these things so we know how much coffee we're talking about. Maybe I'll take this home and measure it when we get back home. Actually, maybe I'll, okay, I'll keep both of these. And we can see another time if we can do a better job than we'll do today. All right, so it sounds like it's starting to run out of water. The nice thing about these pods is that, you know, when you're finished, ouch, that hurts. You, when you're finished, whoa, dangerous, dangerous. Let me turn this off. I'm just unplug that because otherwise it'll just keep on heating that chamber. All right, so there's our finished pucks, pods. And the nice thing about that, it does have a little handle here so you don't have to, it is warm, but you just basically, Toss it in the trash and you're finished. So very convenient. All right, let's put these down. Craig says about six to seven grams of coffee. I think you're right. I think in previous times that we've done this, where we've measured the, the coffee, um, it has been like that. Okay, so here's our three coffees. We've got, we've got the coffee I used yesterday from downstairs. We have the Rainforest Blend in room and then the Brazilian in-room. Oh, one thing to look at is that there are not even amounts of water. It did not, oh goodness. <laughs> it did not evenly, totally evenly distribute the liquid between the two cups. <laughs> Let me put this back in the holder. Um, Oh, that is just putrid smelling. Wow, that is, it's so horrific. You just want to smell it more to confirm that it smells horrific. Wow, that's god awful smell. More pleasant, a little bit more. Wow, I just want to smell it to see how horrifying it smells. Holy moly. Better. Hmm. Smells kind of like tomato sauce today. Oh, man, that's horrifying. Like this. Okay. Okay, let's go the other way, right? We're going to go from yesterday's control.
papery, baggy. That's the kind of a little bit dry, dry on the palate, you know. Not as, maybe not as good as yesterday or maybe just because I was having more mochi. Oh, I do have one more of those mochi sadas left. I'm gonna have to grab one of those. Okay, this is okay. Like, it, it, it's okay. The In Room Rainforest Blend. So if this is kind of just baggy coffee, now we're starting to move into more commercial coffee. I'm getting a little bit more of phenolic characters. Actually, the phenolic is very present. <laughs> For a long time when I was younger, I did struggle with what, what phenol was. Oh, well, well, that's... It's a, it's a, ooh. It's a blend of coffees, but, ooh. Craig says, future is why I bring coffee with me. Yeah, 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 I get it, I get I get, I get why people do it. I'm just lazy, I'm just lazy. Like I, I would, under normal circumstances, I'd never drink the, this coffee in the hotel room, right? Like I just never do, like I'll go out and buy it, right? Because most of the time I'm actually in a situation where I can go out for coffee. And again, like I mentioned the other day, I don't really need coffee to get my day rolling. All right, so now let's go to our Brazil, our Brazil from In Room Coffee. Ooh. Wow. Tar, like charcoal. Man, that aroma is just... So here at the hotel, they offer cream, sugar, and all that. And they also offer the French vanilla from International Delight. This needs that. <laughs> like, if I was to use this, I would definitely use it here to try to help mask that. All right, let's go through, let's go through this again. Uh, you know, that's fairly survivable, fairly okay. It's fairly decent compared to what we're having, right? Wow, man, gosh. Definitely that phenol is strong in that one. Like, that is so horrific. I just want to get, like, I just, I do want to expectorate it. Like, I want to, oh my God. All right, we're going to get that mochi sauce out. Okay, let's look at the mochi sada from Napoleon's Bakery. My last one. So this is, it's Friday. I bought this Wednesday morning. So this is two day old French, I mean, uh, pastry from Zippy's. Or Napoleon's Bakery, which is Napoleon's and Zippy's Bakery arm. All right, let's see how it fares, I mean. Certainly not the equivalent that it was two days ago, but still chewy. Like, it's not too hard, right? All right, now let's see how it pairs with the coffee. This is the Rainforest Certified Gourmet Coffee served downstairs at the hotel breakfast buffet. Okay. Not terrible, not great, but not terrible. Now we're to the Rainforest Blend in room. Tony, definitely this is better than, the, I mean, of, of the three, this is the best. Not that it's great, but Let's put it this way, if I was staying at the hotel and I knew all of this beforehand, I would just go downstairs. Like I would bypass in-room coffee service. Like it's not, this is not even worth brewing. 
how this tastes. Like that, that, that God, that phenol is just. When you get inside, it's still kind of like nice and chewy. This whole rice flour thing, that's why it's called mochi, right? Just gives it more of that chewiness. Like I said, like a powdered queso. Oh, mamma mia, even with the mochi soda, you can still taste that like rough, horrific character. Wow. If this is the only coffee that I ever had from Brazil, God, I would never buy Brazilian coffee again. It's just horrible. It's so bad. Like it's, oh God, this is definitely, in the history of the, the time that I've been doing this coffee Q&A and we've been tasting different coffee, this is definitely the worst coffee so far. Like this is God awful. Like it's God awful. Oh, more taste. I, mean, I still have mochi sauce to go, so we'll go back to this one. Maybe hints of cinnamon y kind of, but maybe that's because of the mochi sauce. Oh, right, that's enough of that. I don't know if I said this on, on this show, but on the, after I left Vegas, I went to visit some friends in St. George. And one of my, my friends that I went to visit, Annie Ruth Pimentel, she's a producer from El Salvador that owns a place called Loma La Gloria. And I've known, I haven't known Annie Ruth since we were quite, well, we were younger, or like probably since about 2008 or so. And in 2000, in the 2010s, she started getting involved with her father's coffee farm and started, you know, working, you know, making coffee. They're producing coffee. And it's been some of the best coffees I've ever ha I've had from El Salvador. Definitely the best coffees I've had from El Salvador, and it's some of the best coffees I have in typical years. And in 2015, I thought her coffee was the best I had that year. And so I stopped by to visit them on the way up here. And she was like, hey, you're going to go visit your friend, you know, why don't you bring him some samples? And I was like, sure, I'll bring him some samples. And so she's like, I got there and I brought it to him yesterday. And he's like, well, you know, I don't really have a sample roaster. So would you mind roasting them for me? And I was like, oh, sure, no problem. So I thought I'd show them to you today. Maybe we'll get more into them in the coming weeks. These are the 2024 lots. And she gave us four samples of coffee. So let's have a look at them. I think I'm, I'm kind of interested in, for myself in a couple of these, right? Are these the same? What are these? Oh, they're different. Okay, they're all different. So this is the 2024 crop. These are green samples. And you know, if you're if you're I'm not if you're not too familiar, um, when you're looking for coffees as a as a buyer, the producers will or importers or brokers or whatever exporters will send you green samples of the coffee for you to roast and taste and evaluate to decide whether or not you're interested in purchasing. And, oh, this is a black honey. You can see by here the BH, it's black honey. And um, you can kind of see the, the the green bean here. So we got a black honey. Um, she typically does red bourbon. Oh, yeah, this is a red bourbon. One of the nice things that I like about Annie is that she's a big proponent of Red Bourbon, right? And Red Bourbon is this kind of like traditional coffee that's grown in El Salvador, but it's also been under assault, especially by what we call the CBB or La Broca. And that La Broca is this little mite that eats the coffee, that likes to eat the coffee cherries and eats the coffee bean and it bores through the bean and like destroys it essentially. And like, if you've ever had coffee that was really dirty tasting, chances are that had coffee that was infested by La Broca. And a lot of times with commercial grade coffees, they will include the, the damaged bean because you know, it, they're trading that coffee on, on, um, on their contracts are said they can have so many acceptable defects. 
and that would be part of them. Another, what else we have? Another one here, we have a, also a red bourbon. This is a red honey process. And so if you're not too familiar with the, uh, the honey processes, um, honey process is essentially what we used to call pulp natural. And what happens, so there are main, the main way of, of processing coffee in Central America over the years has been the wash method. You take the ripe ch coffee cherries, you split the beans out of them in a, in a, in a mill, and it remove it separates the it it depulping. You separate the pulp from the bean. The bean is covered in mucilage. Now, under pulp natural, you would just leave that the way it is and just rake it onto your patios and let it dry. Um, maybe ten, maybe fifteen years ago or so, they started doing these honey coffees, and it's essentially pulp natural with percentages person with certain amounts of the mucilage covering the bean removed, right? So black black honey is essentially the old pulp natural. So typically that means that all of the, the mucilage that's naturally on the bean is left there. Red has some of that removed. Sometimes they will use uh, water fermentation like you would in a wash process. You'll put the, the mucilage covered beans into the water tank, ferment it for just a little bit, then pull it out and then rake it. That would be more red honey. Or you can use what they call a, a demucilaging machine, which is a, in Spanish, I only, knew it, I only used to know it in Spanish, demucilagenadora, and basically that mechanically removes however much of the mucilage you set the machine to. So there's red, so there's red, and then, oh look, there's even, these must be all honeys, okay? So this is a yellow honey, right? There's the yellowy. And so there's black, there's red, there's yellow, oh, no, black, red, orange, yellow, white. Those are typically the, the terms people use in in coffee producing nations to denote how much of the mucilage is removed. There's no necessarily, they're not set percentages. No, there's no ICO setting set percentages of mucilage removed. It all kind of varies depending on whoever's producing it and how much they decide to remove and what designation they call it. If, if it was me and I was producing the coffee, I wouldn't call it white honey. I would call it lychee honey because I think it's kind of a fun name. Well, here's the coffee that I'm really interested in. This is their new unicorn coffee. And this coffee is actually replacing their natural process coffee. So this is a double fermentation natural, right? So the idea is basically they'll dry it for a couple days, rehydrate it, then dry it completely. <clears throat> so instead of taking 21 days to, to, to dry and process this coffee as a natural coffee, it takes maybe 23 to 24 days. So just a couple extra days. So again, you take, and this is a natural process style coffee. So what that means, unlike the red honeys, where you remove the, the pulp, you, this one, you leave the, the cherry whole, everything, you just pick it, you put it onto raised drying beds, rake them out, and <clears throat> typically natural process coffees under the right conditions without much rain, will dry in about 21 days to your to you know somewhere between nine and a half to 11 percent moisture in this case like i said they'll let it dry in the sun for a couple days rehydrate and then finish drying good morning michael how are you doing have you tried lychee honey before i have not tried lychee honey is that i don't even know i was just making that up i don't really know what that is what is that but this this is their this is their new natural and I do, it's called the unicorn and I I love I love her artwork on her ba on her bags and her stuff like her, the one that she did for her wedding coffee was terribly cute like all of it's terribly cute like I like that so it's her it's this this represents their coffee and that's her and Jeff and Nina and Maki and Tachi they're two Siberian huskies who are super friendly dogs as well. And so what we're just, we're gonna be, I'm gonna put these through evaluation. I'm gonna share that evaluation with you. We're gonna show you how I would typically evaluate a coffee. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be some of the content coming up and then we're gonna do some roasting for it. 
Shout out to the person who came up with the term. <laughs> that is a good one. That is a good. I don't know. You know. And I do wonder, was it, did it, was it some buyer that came up with the name Honey? Or was it some producer that thought of the word Miel? That's the, that's the one I don't know. All right. Well, I guess that's what I have for you today. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm still here in, in uh, Salt Lake City. I've got to get ready. I've got to be down to... Cafe de Bola, about 9.30. In about an hour, I gotta be down there. We're gonna start shooting again. Now, a lot of it's more, a little bit more interviewing, a little bit more, there's a little, there's so much more background I still want to learn. Like, cause you know, we're doing it in the middle of service. So people come in and we take a break from our talks. And then, you know, the, today I'm gonna try some of the more esoteric coffees. And if you're not too familiar, he's got a menu right now that has um, one coffee is uh, uh, a, a very rare coffee from Columbia, $75 a cup. We're gonna have to give that a try today. So I figured I would do all this this tasting or talking and hanging out and and then I'm gonna go and try these other coffees and see what the experience is. I, and I think that would give a, I, I didn't wanna do that first like I normally do. Like normally when I go to a coffee place, I'll just get into it right away. But this one, you know, I know John, so we've got time to, to relax and, and get in the groove and so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Kyoto. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that, and hopefully it'll come out. It, it'll take a while for me to release it because it's gonna. There's still a lot of videos that I haven't finished yet. <laughs> but Craig, you're right. Cafe de Bola is the, the Tokyo siphon. If you see on my Instagram, that's the, my last post on Instagram is actually his siphon, where he uses a, a company called Akira Koki, which is a Taiwanese brand where he's, he, him and his wife are actually good friends with the owner of Akira Koki. So John is the North American distributor and they've been producing some items because John has asked them to, he said, hey, this would be a good product, like the siphon burners. And uh, actually it's a really nice, one. like, I, you know, I bought, I've had the, the Hario and then I have this other one, Akira, or maybe, or maybe it's the same company, anyway. Um, the first generation of those heaters I got from John, and they were solid. And but this one, you can see, sleeker design, really much better quality. So, and he's got a three-group one, which is pretty darn cool. Yeah, you know, my siphon is the Tokyo. Actually, I have a Tokyo as well. Those are very nice. What I don't have is the Hario siphon. Most of my siphons are actually Yama. I've got tons of Yama siphons. Actually, I've got way too many. Like I have the lowers. Now it's mostly just the lower orbs and the stands. I've We've, you know, at Spro, we've pretty much broken all of our, our tops, and we always buy more tops. And then we break them, and then, because they're always in service, right? All right, so, we're going to see you tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but uh, on Monday again. We'll be back home at our typical location. So, hope you have a wonderful weekend, and uh, see you next time.